Melanie, this is Ellen, and I'll be correcting this set of essays for you. Um, let's just jump right into this. This is an interesting one. It's a stacked line graph, and I'll explain it to you a little bit. Um, let's see what you wrote. A line graph compares the output of container, brake bolt, bulk, and passenger for... Okay, the grammar in this is a little awkward. Uh, well, first of all, it should be for the third quarter in 2015. Overall, the quantity of, you don't even have to say the quantity of brake foot output. You could have just said the brake foot, the brake bulk output was consistently the highest. Uh, okay, of the four products over the period shown, fine. Also in September, the output of all four items, again, was the highest of the three months, okay? Um, you can't use the comparative here because it's a superlative. You're comparing three things, so you have to use superlative. Now, I'm sensing here that you've misinterpreted this graph, and it's pretty common. This to me looks like a stacked line graph. And so what does that mean? It means that what you're seeing here, okay, um, indicated by the by the orange here, is actually the total. I don't know if that makes sense. So it's actually the total of um like okay if you look at this it looks like they're pretty much all equal here more or less so this is around 100 this is also around 100 so you've got like um yeah this should be around 200 and then here this looks like it's around 300 so each one of these months if that makes sense con uh, containers they had about one hundred uh hundred thousand each and then that each of those hundred thousands got you to this figure right here does that make sense so you can pretty clearly figure out what the figure for july is right um but then you have to do a little bit of math for for august and then also the same thing for uh, September. But the figure here is actually the total of all three months, okay? So yes, it's true, break bulk did have the most, uh, but it, the, the um, for, so for the quarter, it's like around 450,000 or so, okay? But that doesn't mean in September. In September, it was maybe, I don't know, about a third of that figure. So about 150,000, all right? Does this make sense? So that's what happens when you have a stacked chart. And you can tell it's a stacked chart because all of this area is shaded in, okay? If it was just a traditional kind of uh, line graph, this would not be shaded in. But what you're looking at, just to say it one more time, is you're looking at, the third um the third quarter this is the total this figure here and then um the each color represents what each month contributed to this total i hope i explained that well um so i see this happening with some other things i don't usually see a lot of uh, stacked line charts i usually see stacked bar uh, bar charts but, um, you know, okay, so we'll just work with this. Let's see what you did, okay? Let's keep going. Just over 125 MT of Brit, 125, okay. Uh, in, uh, just over 125,000 MT of bolt in July. There's no verb here. You need a verb. You need some sort of an action, okay? It could have been just a, something as simple as, just over 125,000 MT of brake bulk was recorded in July, okay? While the figure for container was around 115,000 TEUs, 
in the next month. Let's see, the output of break bulk surged to more than double, and the number of container output also grew remarkably to about 200,000 container, 200,000. Okay, yes. In the last month of the third quarter, the quantity of break bulk output jumped ED uh, to over threefold, but the figure of container just doubled. Okay. <sighs> Let's see. Just doubled. Well, I didn't really see that actually. Um, Okay, in any case, let's continue. The quantities of bulk and passenger increased month by month, okay, of the third quarter, you need a the here, and the figures for passenger were only higher than bulk. In July, the output for each of the bulk, no, for each, uh, no, the, the output, of bulk and passenger each was approximately 70 MT, and the figure displayed a rise to exceed 125,000. By September, the output of both products went up uh, to around 230 uh, and close to 240,000, respectively. Okay, yeah, so what happened here, Melanie, is you kind of misinterpreted this. Um, you didn't treat it as a stacked line graph, which is understandable because, like I said, these aren't too common. Um, I know we do see occasionally we see uh, stacked bar charts, not stacked line graphs like this. So kind of reading this, I found it um, tricky as well for me even to um, to kind of understand what it is happening here. Uh, let's see. So, like I said, you did want to focus on, on the, on the uh, whole. So, if I were going to do this, I would probably organize the entire answer differently. Um, I would probably have my first paragraph talking about these totals, okay? So, um, I would probably say that um, in the third quarter, break bulk uh, had the highest output of the four, uh, with a total of um, approximately 400 and I don't know what that is, maybe 425,000, okay? It was followed by a container with um, roughly 300,000 and uh, both bulk and passenger each had around 225,000, okay? That's probably what I would do. Um then I would probably describe uh, some of the details in the next paragraph, um, kind of saying what went into that each month, because pretty much the figures are, are equal. I mean, you don't really see um, any, any kind of significant variation here. Um, right, in the next paragraph, you would need to go into the months in detail. So for me, it seems pretty clear looking at this that July has um, kind of the least variation. So you don't really quite have this peak for break bulk that you did for the other two. Okay. Um, so you can see it's a much more gradual sort of incline and then uh, de decline uh, as far as the other thing. Well, not incline, decline, but a, a much smaller variation. Okay, and so that's something I would probably want to talk about. So I would probably want to say um, in terms of uh, each month, uh, there was quite a bit of consistency uh, with each, um, which each category of output, production output, uh, only in, um, with, and then you can say what it is. You could say with, um, each month break bulk at around 125,000. And you could say what kind of went into that, but then you could say that break bulk had like the least variation. And here you can see that they have a pretty consistent um, figure as well. So that's probably how I would do this. Um, 
this is a tricky one. It's kind of difficult to understand what you're looking at and kind of figure out how to say it. But that's a way of, of organizing this. When you have a total like this, you do want to spend time analyzing the total. And then in the second detail paragraph, kind of talk about what went into that total. Okay. So I hope that helps. We spent a lot of time on this. So let's get your task too. All right, so let's uh, go on to this one now. Um, let's see. There is an increase in advertisements towards children. Some people say it's unfair. To what extent do you agree or disagree? Okay. It is true that more children ask their father and mother to purchase products due to too many advertisements that arouse children's desire to possess advertised goods. While I agree that this phenomenon would put huge pressure on parents to buy useless goods, I disagree that it is unfair for them. Okay. Um, I felt this sentence was a little awkward. Um, you tried to really put a lot of information into one sentence, and so that led to some of this awkwardness. Um, so you could have clarified this by simplifying it a little bit, just kind of uh, shortening it, condensing it, or breaking it into two different sentences. That would have been a good idea as well. But other than that, it's fine. You have a clear topic, uh, a, clear, a clear position statement, so that's good. Let's move on. So you agree that it's huge pressure. It's not unfair. Okay, fine. So there are a variety of reasons why increasing advertisements, why mm, increasing advertisements. All right. In, there are a variety of reasons why increased advertisements that aim at young generations make parents have a sense of pressure. Okay. To begin with, parents may be forced to purchase unpractical, we don't say unpractical, uh, products. To illustrate, children are too immature, too immature. No, that doesn't make sense. You, I think you mean our children are not mature. No, that doesn't make sense. Uh, let me see. To illustrate, children, When you say that they're too immature, do you know what, what's happening here, Melanie? You're saying that they are so immature that they cannot be misled, okay? And that's not what you mean. I think you mean they are so immature that they are misled by the contents of advertisements. They may believe that eating advertised food makes us then become more muscular and stronger. Therefore, comma, they request their parents to buy these for them, okay? Uh, or they request their parents to buy this, because it's one thing, for them. Furthermore, children often beg parents to buy items that they have owned. I think you mean that they already own? For example, little girls watch a new doll in advertisements and manipulate parents to buy by begging. Okay. So, um, what I wanted you to talk more about here is the pressure parents feel, not so much examples of what kind of advertisements children watch. I don't think that's really relevant. And that's kind of what you developed your paragraph about. It was supposed to feel, uh, it was supposed to talk about the pressure on parents. Okay. Some parents feel pressure to buy these things for their kids. There's nothing in your essay about that so far. Okay. So you said they may be forced to purchase unpractical products. Um, you know, you could say something like, um, Let's see, um, you know, maybe like advertisements are very clever at provoking a sense of guilt in parents, um, saying that maybe parents who do not purchase, you know, this new computer or this new electronic toy or this doll are, you know, hampering their child's development or are not, you know, getting them something that the children needs for their future. So you could have talked more about this idea of pressure and less about the specifics that you talked about here, okay? That would have been more relevant to me. Paragraph. 
However, even though commercials exert influence, one singular, on young generations, I do not believe that this is unjust for not some reasons, which makes it feel kind of limiting. You could say a number of reasons. The primary reason is that parents are responsible for nurturing their offspring and have a great impact, singular, on them. They could take measures to prevent their children from being brainwashed passive voice by commercials or overbuying. For instance, they can instill correct concepts in children and teach them how to di distinguish true from false. Okay. Moreover, they could help their children develop good consumption. Mm, get rid of the A here. Good consumption habits that help them avoid impulse purchases with an S. Okay. Now, this is all right, but I feel like it's not, again, answering the question. I feel like you're answering a different question. It kind of feels like, how can this be solved? Okay, if almost like it's like a two-question essay where, um, you know, here you're being asked to talk about, um, okay, so, you know, there are advertisements aimed at children. Um, is this positive or is this negative? What can be done to solve this problem? I kind of feel like that's what you're doing here. You're solving the problem. That's not what they really asked you. You're supposed to be talking about why you don't feel that this is unfair. Okay, so it's unfair because it provides opportunities for parents to truly exhibit good parenting, okay? Um, and so this is the responsibility of parents. Uh, ultimately, it is the parents who are responsible for their children and for instilling good habits in them, um, you know, and so they need to be firm and have a sense of discipline, et cetera, et cetera. So this is how you really needed to be talking about this. Okay. All right, let's keep going. In conclusion, I believe that parents feel not stressful, feel stressed because children push them to buy products frequently due to increasing advertising. However, I do not believe that this is unfair since parents could utilize the power of parenthood good to reduce the influence of advertisements on their children. All right, that was good. So you have the right idea, Melanie, but you need to pull it all together so that it sounds like you're directly answering the question that you are asked and not something kind of peripheral, something like related to the question, but not entirely um, directly answering the question. This is something I want you to work on a little bit, okay? So it's a, it's a good first job, a good first set. Um, make sure, please, that you write the essays from the set that I'm going to send you. Um, so keep at it and let's meet back here with your next set of essays. Good luck.